Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. Today, I am doing a draw along. We are going to be focusing on how to draw hair using charcoal. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. I highly recommend, if you have not, that you check out our video on how to draw hair. You will find it in the Anatomy for Artists YouTube playlist. It's gonna give you a lot of concrete items to be considering when you're drawing hair. And as always, I encourage you guys to draw along with me. You can use any media you want, post what you create in the Art Prof Discord. You want to put it in the Art Alongs channel because after the stream, I will be hanging out in there and I love seeing what you guys create. Now, if you would like to download higher resolution images, we do have a link in the YouTube video description below where you guys can get those because it's much better to do that than to draw directly off of my screen. Okay, I wanna just do a quick introduction on supplies because actually I have not done a charcoal draw along in a long time. I feel like the last one I did was a couple of years ago, but I wanna show you guys the supplies because I find that so much of the time, the reason why people have trouble with charcoal it's because they don't have the right tools. And not only do they not have the right tools, but they don't have enough tools. So the first thing I would say, charcoal paper makes a big difference. It has a tooth, which allows the powder of the charcoal to get gripped by that tooth. You can live without charcoal paper. If you don't have it, it's not the end of the world, but it really makes a big difference. And I happen to really love the texture of it. I'm using Strathmore. And by the way, all the links to the supplies that I'm using today, they're in the video description below. So if you guys wanna look those up later on, you can. I always have three different kinds of charcoal. So today, because it's hair, we actually are gonna be using quite a bit of charcoal pencil and they come in different hardnesses. So this one's extra soft. We have soft and we have medium. I happen to really like the soft ones because my issue with the hard ones is that Sometimes there's like a rocky spot in it where it's a little bit inconsistent, doesn't work so great. And I find that the soft charcoal pencils, that's really not a problem. So I happen to stick with those. And then I have two different kinds of charcoal. So here in my right hand, this is vine charcoal, really soft, easy to erase, but it does not get that dark, which is why I think it's really important that you guys use compressed charcoal with the vine charcoal. A lot of people just use vine. Vine can be a problem because it is so fragile. You breathe on it, it changes. Compressed charcoal is a lot more solid, but it's hard to erase, which is why for most people, they don't tend to use it until they feel very well established with their sketch. I have three different erasers. So I have a kneaded eraser here, and this is how you clean it, cleans itself until it starts to look like a little poop, <laughs> in which case you probably wanna get a new one, but these do last a little while. So these are great for this and also for de-stressing. And this is a Mars white plastic eraser. This eraser is really good when you really wanna cut through the charcoal and do something very dramatic. I find the kneaded eraser, this is much better for slightly adjusting the tone, but not taking away too much. It's a much more gentle, well, basically wimpier <laughs> eraser. This is the strong eraser. It's just, it's so strong that it might end up knocking out stuff that maybe you actually wanted to keep. Okay, guys, if you don't have one of these, you're missing out. <laughs> this is an eraser stick, and these are fantastic because they just come in these little pen containers, and it comes with refills. So, for example, you can just buy refills like this, and you just keep using them. So this is a great investment. It's honestly one of my favorite tools for charcoal. So again, links in the video description below if you guys wanna see what's going on with that. All right, what I'm gonna to try to do today, I'm working fairly small. This is way smaller than I prefer to draw, but I did wanna make sure that we got through a lot of different types of hair. And now that I think about it, I doubt 
that this is going to be our last stream on how to draw hair. There are so many hairstyles out there, and I feel the need to represent that because somebody told me, I think in a stream a little ways back, they said that a lot of the how to draw hair tutorials on YouTube are all blonde people. I was like, really? I, I don't think that's good. So we're going to try to represent a broader range of different people. And so this first reference we're using, it's in the lower left-hand corner, is Indira India Moore. Oh, I really can't pronounce anybody's name. Anyway, they are in a TV show called Pose. I have no idea. I just thought that they had really awesome hair. So if some of you guys want to instruct each other on who India Moore is, go ahead, be my guest. But I think they have amazing hair. Anyway, I just took some bind charcoal and I wiped it across the page. And now I'm just going to do a quick sweep with my hands. And this is a way to put down a ground of gray. So I have something to work on top of. Of course, you get dirty really fast. If you have really sweaty hands, this might not work great. If you do, you might want to get a paper towel or something like that. But this is a really nice way because it gets you over the fear of the wide of the page. Your page is messed up. There's nothing you can do about it. So I find this reassuring to know that the paper's already basically been ruined. Okay. What I like to do is start sketching with vine charcoal. And this vine charcoal, it's way smaller than I like it to be. Most of the time I'd rather my vine charcoal be like big and chunky, but I couldn't find any. So we're just gonna start with this and we're gonna get started really, really lightly just blocking things in. Now this is again, so much smaller than I would rather work. But I think what I wanna really show you guys today it's just how to start drawing the hair. And then maybe at some point we will definitely do a stream where I do a drawing that's like finished, one that's a lot more rendered, but at least for now, I just wanna put in something to show you guys how to start it. Cause I oftentimes think that's really what people have more trouble with. So the, the key really you guys is to put in the hair early. That, that's what people don't do. I mean, I see people they do this beautifully rendered face that looks incredible, but then they don't do the hair until they're almost done. So you see, I've worked on the drawing for about 30 seconds, boom, the hair is there. I mean, how could you draw this portrait and not put the hair in immediately? It's such a critical part of somebody's identity, okay? So now that I have the mass, I wanna think a little bit more about the bone structure. And again, I'm not gonna do that much work on the figure, but it's like when Jordan and I, we did that stream the other day on how to draw hair. And we were talking about how, well, you know, we're just drawing clothing, but both of us are still gonna bother to actually draw in the rest of the body because it's like, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So although I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time on the face, I do need to spend some time on it because it's weird to like draw hair without putting it in context. That's my feeling. You need to put it somewhere. So let's get in, of course, our eye sockets, which you guys should know all about now because you've got your anatomy lectures to be studying. And tell me, you guys, if you've been following us in terms of our anatomy stuff, because I'm working on it and I'm hoping that maybe next month I'll have the opportunity to get in there and start really breaking down muscles because I know we haven't had a chance to do that yet. Okay, this is a mess. Ugh. See, I'm already picking. I should not be doing this. Move on, okay? If you're like me and you didn't move on, you gotta do it right now because that's what I'm gonna force myself to do. Okay, so what I'm gonna look at is not individual hairs, but the general direction of the hair. So like this hair moves upwards. There's a hair that goes horizontally. There's a clump that goes this way. So this is more building up the structure because there's a curl mass that comes down here. There's one that goes below it and there's another one that's a little bit more curvy, okay? So these are just really simple ways to look at the direction of the hair to break it down so it doesn't feel so overwhelming because I do think a lot of people would look at this and go, oh my God, I don't know where to start. That, that's very natural for people to feel that way but that's what you have to 
not get seduced by. You have to think about the general direction of where things are going. Now, of course, as always, I will be taking breaks from drawing to look at the chat, answer questions. So when I'm drawing, I will not be looking at the chat because sorry, I just can't multitask that way. But if you have questions, please feel free to ask me, put in the chat and I'll scroll up when I'm taking a break. So that way I can see what you guys are talking about. Ooh, 10,000 Crows did some research. Okay, their name is Indira Indra. Sorry, I don't know if I mispronounced. Musician, daughter of a social worker and jazz musician. She's named after the Hindu warrior deity of the sky and the rain. Very cool. I like that. Poppy Art is saying, where do I find the anatomy stuff? You're going to want to go into the playlist section of our YouTube channel and find the one that's called Anatomy for Artists. There's a specific stream there about how to draw hair where I get really specific about the structure and what to look for. Okay, let's get back into the drawing and tell me in the chat, what is your, for lack of a better word, relationship <laughs> with charcoal? Because uh, Jordan's got some strong feelings <laughs> about charcoal. He, he told me this whole story the other day about how he, did not want to draw in charcoal for this anatomy class and ended up pleading with the teacher if he could draw with something else. And he said he ended up doing some of his best work that semester because he took the time to ask the teacher and the teacher said, yeah, that's fine, work with this instead. So it was a great lesson. It never hurts to ask you guys. Okay, I wanted to get the shape of the eye here. See, I don't really want to pick very much on this face. In fact, it's kind of bothering me that I am, but I feel like if I don't have something just a little bit more solid, this is going to be really messy. Ooh, you guys, this actor, they have an amazing sternocleidomastoid. I'm drawing it right now. We have not gone over that yet, but we will definitely get to that at some point. Okay, let's really dig into the hair. Okay, so let me firm up some of these strokes, like actually this one that I put down earlier, it's a little bit more round. See, this is what I really like about vine charcoal is you almost don't need an eraser. I just mush it with my hands and it's so easy to get rid of. I mean, eventually that is something that does become problematic because sometimes people do really nice work in vine charcoal and then they realize, oh my goodness, this is so fragile it's gonna get ruined. And so at a certain point you have to move on. I actually think that for a lot of people, they spend too much time with the vine charcoal and it messes you up. So you don't wanna stay with it for too long, but right now I need it because I'm trying to figure out some of the bigger shapes. A lot of squinting today, guys, really important because I can't get seduced by the individual shapes. So really what you're looking at is what I talked about earlier, which is you create the mass, which is the whole thing, and then you break it down into the direction of the hair. Which way is the hair going, okay? And actually, this is a good spot. There's one big curl that comes down here, and it goes a little past her ear, their ear, sorry. Um, and I guess there's a little hair back here, I think. Should do some more squinting. I think I'm messing up the eyebrow, but I don't want to fuss too much in that area. You know, I think the face should be a little wider. Again, I don't want to get too picky about that because really this is more about what I'm doing with the hair, but it's like, you can't help yourself sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's hard to leave it alone. When, when you know you could do better, it, it's hard to step back and make that happen. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start blocking in some of the tonal range with the compressed charcoal. I know for some of you guys, this might seem a little bit insane that I would go in this soon, but honestly, if you do too much more with the vine charcoal, you're gonna get screwed later on because then you won't be able to get rid of any of it, okay? So these strokes that you're putting in well, assuming you're following me, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. Um, these big chunks, they might feel 
too dramatic, but they're helping me map out the structure of the hair. So what I'm going to try to do now is separate between these like highlighted curls that are in the middle because there's three of them and I'm looking for big chunks of black that are coming down like this. So you'll notice also with the compressed charcoal that I draw with the side of it. I don't draw with the tip because I think oftentimes if you draw at the tip, first of all, it makes you really tighten up a lot. And also you can't be as efficient. Like when I do this, I can fill in very large areas. I also draw looser. So if you guys have not ever really drawn with the side, definitely take advantage of that. It's a huge difference in terms of where your drawing is going. Okay, and then I will do a little bit on the face, like zygomatic arch. You got the mandible here. Awesome. And our beautiful sternocleidomastoid. Oh, awesome. And then a pretty dramatic shadow here. So you'll notice that in my drawing, I really try to stick with the side anytime I can. Let's bulk up some of that. Don't fuss because you know what? I don't know if I, does anybody else do this? I feel like I go through this like self analysis stage. <laughs> After I do a live stream, I like, I did the same thing the other day. I, I babysat my water mixable oil painting. It, it just sat, it's right here. It's like to the right of my desk. And I just babysat, I kept looking at it. It was bad, I should not do that. But I keep reflecting upon it. I'm like, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. And so of course, Probably gonna do the same thing here. You know, the neck is visibly darker than the face. So let's block in just a basic gray. And here's the stage where you have to be willing for your drawing, for you to lose a lot of information. Because the thing about charcoal is you have to have something down. Like if you don't have something substantial like on the paper, it actually can be really, a huge hassle because like here the lower section is a little bit more gray and I'm going to do a lot of removing later on but I think for now I just want to knock in the general direction like up here so we have to build the mass like right now it just looks like stuff is flying and that's not I mean I guess it sort of is I suspect this was a fancy photo shoot they probably had fans and things like that to make your hair do wacky things it's quite dramatic though, it's very cool. Okay, step back and squint. I hope you guys are squinting because so much of drawing is looking and seeing and checking. It is not just this mindless thing where you go on an automatic pilot. I, I feel that drawing is something you really have to spend time thinking about. Okay, so let's build in these curls and then maybe a little more direction up here and I guess I need a little more substance back there. Okay, it's still pretty mushy, but that's okay. Just a quick sketch. Okay, let's see what you guys are talking about in the chat. <laughs> 10K wants to know what 80s movie I watched. What did I watch last night? Oh, I think I finished Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I was like, I deserve some eye candy. So I put on The Light Between the Oceans with Michael Fassbender and watched that for too long. <laughs> Way past my bedtime, basically. <laughs> Trent says, I struggle with charcoal, especially compressed. I always find it hard to control values and fill a large area because the edge of the stick always catches or is uneven. That's where I think part of the process is accepting that your drawing is going to be a hot mess. It just is going to be. <laughs> That's just the way, in my opinion, charcoal has to begin. Charcoal is not a neat medium at all. It's extremely blunt. And I think it's important to not give yourself a hard time about it because every charcoal drawing has to start as a hot mess, in my opinion. Mackenzie says, just spent six hours with charcoal on my final project. I love the look at it, look of it but it makes my hands so dry. My other issue with charcoal is that as much as I like it, it's not great if you're trying to sell something because 
Charcoal drawings are just really fragile. They can get damaged easily. And really, honestly, the only way you can 100% keep them protected is under glass. And who has the time to do that? You can get this. This is Krylon Crystal Clear Fixative. You can also get Workable Fixative, which is a fixative you can put on while you're still working on it. But honestly, the fixative bothers me because it does make your drawing a little bit darker. Maybe other people wouldn't notice. I definitely notice, so it bothers me. But this is an option. It won't 100% protect your drawing, but it will do something. So it's just a little bit more stable. But that's, for me, the biggest issue I have with charcoal is just it being so incredibly fragile. It drives me up the wall. Yeah, like Seven Angelic is saying charcoal's cool, but I do kind of not love the aftermath. Also, storing them afterwards is always tough. Let's see, what else are people saying? Angie says, charcoal's my favorite because of how quickly you can get things down on paper. Graphite and colored pencil isn't as satisfying. Oh, absolutely. The speed with which you can block things in with charcoal, it's incredible. I mean, that's actually one of the reasons why, so he here's my feeling about charcoal, okay? Is that it's a flawed medium as far as like archival stuff like that goes. But I think in terms of, loosening people up, getting them more aggressive and more bold and learning how to really deal with their mistakes, it's much better than pencil. Because what I find oftentimes, which is pretty common, is a lot of high school students I find are never really taught to use charcoal. I have no idea. Like for some reason, people only seem to think that pencil exists in high school. I think it's a little strange, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that oftentimes if I give people charcoal and they're used to drawing with pencil a lot, the charcoal usually is pretty effective in terms of getting them out of their comfort zone and starting to be a little bit bolder and a little bit more brave as far as what they're doing. Because I, I do think that pencil sort of encourages people to draw very tight, very slow, and while sometimes that is what you want, it's not always the best idea. Sometimes it's just too slow and people end up not being aggressive enough. And I think that can be a problem. So charcoal definitely has its place. I just think, yes, like other media, it can be a problem. Okay. What I'm going to do now, actually, is I'm going to go through and I'm going to just block out the white in the background. Because you know something, you guys? If you want to feel like you're making a lot of progress, do the background first. It makes you feel like half the drawing is done. It's awesome. And I know some people might think this is weird, but you know what? Look at this. Look at what's going to happen in terms of the mass of the hair. It's going to totally transform. It's great. So yes, I mean, the hair is going to look funky for a little while, but I've accepted that. Hot mess, that is gonna happen. And you know something? I do think you guys, that a hot mess is easier to fix than to try to get it right the first time. I can't do that. I don't know anybody who can. I think it's much easier to make a mess and clean it up rather than try to do a slam dunk the first time because that's really hard to do. Okay. This is getting really, really messy. But let's pull out some of these negative spaces. And that begins a little bit to hint at the mass. Yes, the shape of her hair is really funky in my drawing right now, but I don't care. I have a mass. If you guys go back and you watch that video where I talk about how to draw hair, You'll notice that something I talk about a lot is thinking about hair when you're drawing it like you're a sculptor, that you're sculpting the hair. Like if somebody gave you guys a clunk of clay, would you make little thin snakes and curl them all up to make somebody with curly hair? No way. There's no way you would do that. You would probably build a mass on top and then you would pull out individual forms. And so that is the mindset you wanna have. Drawing hair is not just a technique, it's also like, how do you go about doing this? Like, what is your approach? So don't tell yourself 
that technique is everything because it definitely is not. Okay, now here is where I think my razor stick is definitely gonna help me out. I just wanna get rid of some of this negative space first. I think, oh, I feel like there's so many issues with the face, but I sort of don't want to mess with it right now just because I want to spend more time in the hair, but too bad, I just went in and I did it. I think the eye is a little bit too, a little bit too low. So I'm just going to pull that up a little bit. And of course the nose got all funky in the process. So let's bring back, actually let's use the eraser stick. Oh, you guys, if you guys don't have one of these, you got to ask this for, whatever holiday you celebrate. Gotta get one of these guys. Oh, it's the greatest thing. In fact, I need to cut it because it's like pulled out a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna take my knife. I'm gonna just trim it a little bit because if it's too long, it does get a little floppy and I don't like that. So I'm just gonna fix that. Actually, the lip should come out a little more. So let me make some fixes. It's easy to get really hung up on the face and I suspect that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Come on, Clara, stop it. <laughs> oh guys, giving advice and following through on it are two different things <laughs> for sure. Okay, so at the very least, I'm gonna stop fussing here. But do you guys see what this did, like really carving that negative space out of that background? So even though the face and the hair don't look great right now, at the very least, you have a sense of the mass. Okay, so in here, I'm gonna think about that transition from the hair into the side of the face. And here, you know something, I probably do have to do a little bit of work on the face because I need to pull out the, the color difference because the skin here is so much brighter than the hair that it just, it wouldn't make sense if I didn't do that. So let's just pull out some cheekbones. Oh, this feels good. I just love a new kneaded eraser. It's just so fun. Oh my gosh. Greatest thing ever. Yeah, I really don't use charcoal that much in my own practice today. I used it a lot when I was in high school, but not so much now. And obviously a ton in art school as well, but um, not recently. I always felt sort of like a hypocrite because I would make the freshman at RISD <laughs> draw with charcoal. And I'm like, oh, I kind of don't like it myself. But it's good for, like I said, for like training reasons. It's, it's a good thing to have. Okay. I mean, I could sit here and fuss over these muscles all day. But I told you guys I was going to teach you how to draw hair. So I guess I better stick to my agenda. But let's just knock in a couple more highlights on the nose so it's not so terrible. You can always come back and do more. So this is where your eraser stick is so helpful because it can get into little areas that are just really a pain with the kneaded eraser. The kneaded eraser is just so like incredibly mushy. It's big, it's blunt. I mean, that that's what those tools are really difficult to deal with. Okay. I know the face is not good, guys. I would fix it, but I need to work on the hair, okay? <laughs> okay, let's do this. So let's do some squinting. And I'm gonna start doing some more direct drawing with the tip. You notice that's a pretty big shift because in the beginning I was very against using the tip, but now I'm gonna start really using the tip so I can get more specific, start pulling out some of these strokes and varying also the pressure. So you'll notice the further the hair gets away from the head, it gets lighter and lighter, all right? So if you start here, actually I have to get rid of some of this back here. I think I have way too much down at the bottom, yeah. Okay, so for example, if I start up here and there's this pretty dramatic curl and it comes up like this, I'm decreasing the pressure. So here I'm pressing dark, now I'm pressing dark, and now I'm going lighter and lighter, okay? So change the pressure of that hair because I think the thing is when people put down lines of hair, they tend to make the lines too similar. So variation in line weight 
and pressure, all those things are gonna make a huge difference for you guys when you're drawing the hair. Because like up here, it's more like atmosphere. I mean, I suppose there's a couple marks you could pull out, but a lot of it's pretty subtle. Like here I'm pulling out this mark going this way. It's more about the direction. Okay, now there's a big chunk of black here and I'm looking for shapes of black, like this shape here. And actually here, it gets a little bit smudgy. So maybe I should show this transition right here. So this transition from the forehead into the hair because people make this edge way too sharp. And it's like, it looks like a wig, it looks terrible. So make sure you don't let that get too sharp. Like that. And keep your drawing pretty loose. So I see like a really big pocket of black here. So I'm actually gonna break my compressed charcoal. There's like a big shave of black. Tell me you guys, do you find this hair challenging to draw? I think a lot of people find hair that's curly. Although I don't know, I think straight hair is sort of tricky too because it's just not as much to draw. This is sort of the opposite where there's so much to draw. It's like people get very overwhelmed, but sometimes straight hair just looks really flat. Like I think it's hard to draw hair that's straight and make it feel volumetric. I feel like with curly hair, it actually is easier to make it look more three-dimensional. Whereas I do think with the straight hair, it can be a challenge. So it's like things are not as straightforward as you might think. People, I think oftentimes they're, they're quick to make assumptions about what will be easy, what will be difficult. And actually it's so much more complicated than that. Okay, let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. Is it Michi? I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. I have the same tool. It's called Factus BM2 for those who are wondering. Yep, it's made by Generals. And you can find the link for that in the video description below. W315 says, why not just retract some eraser? It's got a click advance like a mechanical pencil, right? Yeah, but I'm so picky <laughs> about it that it had this roundness to it on the tip and I wanted that like sharp, crisp edge. I don't know, call me picky, but uh, <laughs> that's how I feel about that. Mackenzie says, do you have any favorite white charcoal? Everyone seems to love Conte, but I can't get behind it. Well, here's the thing. This is my personal taste, okay? And this doesn't necessarily work for everybody. In charcoal, I don't tend to like adding a white something, whether it's white charcoal or white pastel or white Conte. I don't tend to like that very much because there's two problems. The first thing is, it's hard to make that white really blend and fit into the charcoal drawing unless you put it everywhere. You know, like sometimes every time I taught freshman drawing at RISD, we do these charcoal drawings, there's always somebody who would come in and they would like try to fix like one spot with white charcoal or something. And you could always see it from a mile away. And the reason why is because the color of the paper, it's not the same as the color of the white pastel or charcoal. And so you end up with these competing white tones. And usually the white Conte crown is like a little more blue. Maybe the paper feels a little more brown. So then you have like a big color issue. And so I'm not really a fan of it for that reason. I just happen to like the feel of the eraser. It's up to you guys. I mean, it's sort of like a personal taste thing, but I feel like for me, the drawing process is a lot more straightforward if I don't bring in that white because at that stage, it's really a different ball game. It almost becomes like a soft pastel drawing much more than a charcoal drawing. So yeah, that can be really difficult to use. Ayane says, I had only heard of pastel colors, not actual pastels before college. I'd also never used charcoal or any paint other than watercolor before university. I ended up doing almost entirely digital and graphite for most of my life. Yeah, I don't know why. I it's like, I look at some of these programs, I'm like, what, have you never been to an art store? Like, <laughs> haven't you ever gone to an art store and been like, what's that? Let me try it. Like, there's so many fun supplies. Like, I cannot wrap my head around why as a teacher you would ever limit people to pencil, 
forever and ever. Don't get me wrong. I like pencil. I'm just saying I like apples. Am I going to eat apples the rest of my life? No way. Like <laughs> this is way more fun to play around. Victor says, I use pencils the wrong way ever since I was little. Wrong hand position, so my hands always make a mess rubbing through it. Well, I don't know that there's a wrong way to hold a pencil. You older folks, tell me in the chat if this ever happened to you, but when I was in second grade, I was told by my classroom teacher that I held my pencil wrong. I hold my pencil like this. I know it's weird. People are like, how can you hold it like that? Like this to me is the way to hold it. They told me this was incorrect and that I was supposed to hold it like this. So they, they didn't, they didn't want it like this. This is how I normally hold it. And they wanted me to hold it like this. And I could not control this. And so they had these like metal brace things <laughs> like for your hand to like train you to hold it. I don't know why people ever thought that was a good idea. But anyway, it did not work on me, obviously, because I'm still using it the wrong way, whatever that's supposed to mean. <laughs> Ella says, wow, I'm so glad you were in my recommended. Your art is gorgeous. You have a lot of talent. Thank you so much for joining us, Ella. You know what, though, guys? Talent only takes you so far. I mean, you can be very talented, but you got to work your butt off if you want to be an artist. In fact, a lot of people will ask me, they'll say, okay, well, what do, sorry, I'm squinting for a second. They'll say, what do all great artists have in common? And a lot of people might say, oh, well, they have nothing in common because artists are so different from each other and none of them are the same. They did have something in common. They all worked like crazy. That, that's, that's absolutely part and parcel of what you need to do if you want to put your work out there and get it seen because you can be really talented. I mean, I went to art school and I've taught students who are much better than me at drawing. And some of them are really lazy and they, they don't wanna try anything new or they don't wanna work hard or they're lazy or there's any number of things that really can get in the way of that. So yeah, talent is one thing, it's fine. And I do believe there's talent. We do have a stream that Jordan, and Alex did a little ways back. And it asks the question, is drawing a talent or a skill? By the way, tell me in the chat what your take is on that, because that's sort of an ongoing debate that I think just everybody is always having all the time. So it was always, I'm always interested in seeing what people think. But um, I do think there's talent because I've taught people who are just so massively freaking talented. It like really is like magic. So I've definitely taught that, but I have definitely also worked with people who are not that talented, but who work so hard and have done so well because of their dedication. And I respect that so much, guys. I think that's extraordinary. Like, I don't know if you guys have heard this, but Jordan got a job at DreamWorks. And that wasn't because he sat around, because Jordan's one of the hardest working people on this planet. And he, he did that on his own without hard work. So it goes a long way. Those, those long hours, that, that dedication, that persistence, it's so important. Okay, let's get back to this drawing. I got to do a lot of squinting actually because the lighting on this photo is really not very good. In fact, I had a hard time finding photos for this because a lot of the photos, the hair just looks terrible in terms of lighting. Like the lighting is just not that good. So I'm going to do now is I wanna pull out, there's this one curl that goes up this way and I'm trying to look at how they line up. There's three, there's like one, two, three, and there's a bigger pocket of space. And this one at the bottom, it's sort of like bends more. So I'm gonna give it more of a curvature that comes out. And I guess beneath that, oh, I guess I'm sort of missing some hair. I feel like maybe I should add more down here. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. Oh, the face is still, but I'm not going to do it, guys. The face is bothering me so much. Oh, my God. It's the lip. I totally, oh, I got to do it now. <laughs> I, can't, I can't leave this behind. This is driving me crazy. It's this angle is like way wonky and strange. I just want to get this little, oh, this is a terrible pencil. I need the soft one. It's extra soft. That'll do it. Sometimes I feel like Goldilocks. Like we always talk about, you guys have noticed this with, with artists. We're always like, is that soft? I think it's too hard for me. 
oh, I would like it a little softer. Well, it's too crumbly. Like, we're also we're such like Goldilocks divas, I suppose. I just want to. Oh, this angle is going to drive me crazy if I leave it. Um. I just want to pull up the nose a little bit. I promise. I promise I'll work on the other stuff soon. I promise. This is driving me a little crazy, though. The lip is a lot bigger than I have it. Ugh! Okay. Remember that? Remember that comment about hot mess, guys? And by the way, I just caught myself doing it. I got to the, the charcoal pencil way too soon. Don't do that. Okay? Don't do what I did. Charcoal pencil, I really think, should be one of the last things that you do because it's hard to erase. The other stuff is a lot easier. Turkle pencil, not forgiving at all. So I just try really hard to not put it in too soon. Okay, and I do wanna make the eyelash a little more substantial because I think it's weird to not have that. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, let's start doing some erasing so we can start pulling out some of the highlights. We may, we probably will not get to all the reference photos, but that's okay because we'll get to them in another stream. I just like to have too many just in case, like backup. Because um, I did want to do Ava Mendez because Jordan and I both are in agreement that she is hot. She's really hot. Because you know, Jordan's favorite, one of his favorite movies is Hitch with Will Smith and Ava Mendez. And I, he got me to watch it. And I'm like, yep, she's, she's hot. Oh my God, she's incredible. So anyway. All right, and now I'm gonna start to really dig in a little deeper and more dramatically. Maybe a little bit more mark making back here, just lightly showing texture. Not individual hairs, texture. There's a very big difference there, guys. And then I'm gonna pull out a couple more. But it's like you want to insinuate that there's texture back there. Think about the variation, the physical pressure that you have in your drawing and vary it. Don't let it be the same. And we'll go back in here with an eraser at some point to really get in more. Okay. And actually, sorry, it's lots of charcoal dust and eraser gunk going on in there. So this one comes behind their forehead and there is like an individual hair there, but I'll come back to that. I wanna show more of the mass that's coming off in this direction like that. Okay, it's time to do more squinting. You know what I'm gonna do now? Actually, I'm gonna come back and I'm kind of come behind the hair. Maybe I'll switch to the, maybe not the eraser stick. Okay, maybe the Mars eraser. So this is something you guys can try is that as much as you can erase around things to get the mass, it's really helpful to go back and do that here. Like if you look at this, do you guys see these like little pockets of negative space that are in between the hair? I mean, this is where it's like, oh man, that eraser stick is awesome. So good for this. In fact, this is too small. I'm gonna do it with the kneaded eraser first and then I'll go back in and do a pass because you, you can get picky if you stick with the eraser stick too much. There is such a thing as maybe abusing the privilege of having an eraser stick. Yeah, see like here you can see there's this one negative space that sort of cuts through the hair a little bit more dramatically. And then up here, I'm gonna really clear it out so that this part breathes a little bit more. And then that gives the hair a little bit more shape. And same thing in here, I'm gonna pull out some negative space. So that's what I like about charcoal is this back and forth. You take it away, you put it back, take it away, put it back again. And that can be very helpful. So like here, I can see the negative space creeps in a little closer. So I'm gonna pull out some of this. So I think the misconception for a lot of people is that like you only draw the hair, but you don't. You draw on the hair, behind the hair. It's a whole series of motions that you have to put yourself through. And like up here, I'm gonna actually soften some of the edges with my 
kneaded eraser. And hopefully that helps clear up some of that space. I do need to fix this nose. This nose drives me crazy. But again, I know, I know we're not here. I just love faces. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know I'm not being a very good influence right now. Okay. Let's see what people are saying in the chat. We have a comment from Ayane who says, for example, people say that I'm, quote, talented, but I actually have a, I don't know how to say this name, proprioceptive disorder that disadvantages me when it comes to dexterity and my sense of orientation. I have extremely bad spatial. Oh, interesting. Wow. I had no idea about that. And let's see. W315 says, yours looks like you've dumped an entire coal bin on your paper. I haven't managed to grind that much charcoal on it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you guys, I have to fulfill the hot mess part of the process. And for me, it's easier to clean up that mess. And Darian is saying, what if you use charcoal with different colors, then blend them together to make something unique? Is that possible? Try it. I mean, my whole feeling, you guys, is as long as you're not setting your house on fire or endangering yourself or somebody else, give it a shot. Because what have you got to lose? You do it, it looks terrible, you don't do it again, right? That's the nice thing about art is that there's not a lot of issues there. So try it. My feeling is that at that point, Darian, you might as well just be using soft pastels. So I don't see a compelling reason to blend the two, but some people might feel differently. Just try it. I think that would be great. Angie says, this comment section is exactly why I love Art Prof. It makes me feel not alone in my weird way of thinking. Well, yes, <laughs> I think that is definitely a mutual feeling, Angie, because as much as I'm supposed to be a professional, whatever that's supposed to mean, I'm still learning. You guys see me falling on my face asking Jordan 18 times, how do I move the layers in Procreate? It's ongoing. I just don't think as an artist, you should ever stop learning. I mean, there's a time and a place to buckle down and focus and really try to work with something that way, but there's also time to experiment. And I think you guys should definitely embrace that. There's so much of the world that tells you what you should or should not be. As a person, I can tell you guys, I live a very boring life because I like my life that way, but I like my creative life to be very chaotic and scatterbrained. I enjoy that. Like in my real life, I'm not one of those people that's like, I'm going to go live in Antarctica for six months. Like I would never do that. Not one of those people. But in terms of trying something wacky with my artwork, I am totally game all the time. Monique is saying great lessons here. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for watching, Monique. Really happy to have all of you guys here. Shayim says, it's just my opinion, but the hair in front of the hair seems a bit flat. Okay, so I love it when you guys give me comments, but I'll tell you one thing, okay, is that I am not at a stage, in my opinion, that I'm ready to pass any judgment on my drawing. OK, because I do think you guys, well, I think critique is so helpful and very useful. It can get very distracting if you start worrying about stuff like that when you're in the trenches. Tell me in the chat if that is something that you guys experience, because I know that for me, I, I just I can only do one thing at a time. So oftentimes what I do is I make the piece, I put it away. I don't look at it and then I look at it because if I start like critiquing myself, it's all over. I'm going to have a really hard time. So I would just say to you guys that it's important to ask yourself like, okay, critique is always helpful, but is it the right time for the critique to come in? And for some people, maybe they do want the critique really early. For me, I'm just getting started. So I'm not ready to pass judgment on it yet. I will eventually, trust me, <laughs> there'll be plenty of that later on. But for now, I just need to draw. Sometimes it's just really that simple. Maria says, I think that people sometimes think that artists are like in the movies. I think that visual artists are not that quote unique. They are people who think in a visual way and solve problems like that. Yeah, I mean, 
I'm sorry, it's just not that romantic <laughs> a lot of the times, like all this stuff about artistic. I'm like, now nah, I was taking a shower and I thought of something. I mean, it really can be that boring sometimes. So yes. All right, let's work on pulling out some of the areas in the hair. So I think I'm gonna start with the kneaded eraser. Let's see how much this does. It might not be strong enough. If it's not, I'll go back in with my eraser stick. But eh, this isn't bad. It's a little mushy. I don't like the mushiness, but you know what? I'll go back in with the charcoal pencil and we'll figure that out later. So what I'm doing is pulling out any of the, the brighter curls. So a lot of this with hair, it's like, you gotta be selective. You can't pay attention to everything. You just can't. There, there are some points where you have to say, you know what, that, that's a section, I'm just gonna let it go. Cause you know what, just cause it's there, in the reference doesn't mean you have to draw it. You can choose and say, you know, I don't want to add that. It's fine. I think a lot of people feel this obligation towards a reference photo that, oh, because the photo has it, that means I have to add it. Tell me in the chat, do you guys feel that way? That, okay, that's the way the hair is done in the photo. So therefore I have to do that too. I definitely feel that all the time. And so oftentimes what I do with reference photos, if I'm using them, sometimes I'll actually go into Photoshop and I'll blur them on purpose because sometimes I don't want things to be quite so clear. So if I have a reference photo that's messier or has fewer details, I'm a lot less likely to feel that obligation. And I know in my head, I don't have to, but I think sometimes it's like when the information is there, it's hard to not use that information because you're like, oh, well, it's all there. I might as well, but it, it doesn't always make your drawing better. So tell me in the chat if you guys have that experience because I definitely do for sure. Or I feel like, oh, well, the reference has it. I guess my drawing must have to have that too. Okay, um, here I'm gonna try to make the gradient a little bit better because I'm noticing that the core of the black is here and down here at the bottom, and here it's actually a lot more gray. So here I'm gonna pull out some of this texture just so like value wise, that whole area is a lot lighter. And actually let me um, reset the focus because now that I've started drawing, sometimes it changes the focus a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've pulled out, gotta squint more. I think I gotta pull out more here. This is what I like about charcoal. I really enjoy the back and forth. It's so fun for me. Like you add it, you take it away, you add it, you take it away. It's very sculptural and that part of it is super, super fun. Okay, so now I probably have pulled out too much, but that's where your handy little charcoal pencil is definitely gonna be coming to the rescue. Um, actually, this curl sort of moves down. By the way, who's drawing along? Tell me in the chat if you guys are drawing with me, if you're just watching. I know a lot of people will sometimes watch during the stream live and then they'll actually draw along with it later. And you guys can always do that. We love it. And you can come into our Discord. You can show us what you made. It's so fun. Somebody today, literally just a few minutes before the stream posted some drawings they did from the draw along about foreshortened faces. It's great. So you don't always have to be here live in order to catch that stuff or to draw with us. It's super fun. Okay, so that's too much highlights. Now I'm gonna go back in with charcoal pencil and we're gonna do some, we're gonna have some fun here. Okay, soft. I got it. I don't want soft. I want extra soft. Okay, that's good. So now here's where you can start to like tighten up a little bit better. Start to do some articulation. And what I'm looking at here is the harshness of the edges because some edges I want harsh and some I want to be soft. So I'm really using the charcoal pencil to make some spots more concrete, harsh up the edges and give it more texture. And you guys will notice I don't smudge with my finger very much. It's up to you guys. My feeling about smudging is that things become very messy very fast. And I don't like that. So I think it's better to smudge with your erasers. 
You'll have more agency, more control over it. And you know what I'm noticing is that this charcoal pencil, it's like really light. So I'm actually gonna use this instead of the charcoal pencil because this is like the wrong color, like it doesn't match. I think it might be because it's two different brands because this is Generals and this is Faber-Castell. So it could be that maybe their charcoal mixtures are not compatible. I don't know, who knows? All right, I might do the charcoal pencil for some of the sharper sections, but at least for now, I'm just gonna stick with the compressed charcoal until I'm ready for like the really fine stuff that I will get into in a little bit. Okay, so you can see in here in the curls, this is where I really am gonna get specific and let myself get detailed like that. And then like down here, they're very pronounced, like very strong highlights down here towards the bottom. And I'll do some smudging and maybe I'll pull out a couple spots with my eraser stick, trying to get for that variation. See, here's where, oh, you guys are gonna love your eraser stick. <laughs> you gotta get one if you guys don't have one. It's the greatest tool. Like I, I'm usually sort of skeptical when art stores or manufacturers, they come up with some new thing and it's like, ooh, try this new tool we have. Most of the time I'm like, yeah, whatever. This thing is awesome. This thing is like a revolution <laughs> in charcoal. It's just the greatest thing. Actually, for the longest time, I used to buy it from Paper Mate. It was called Tough Stuff, but then they like discontinued it. And so I guess Generals like picked up the slack. So thank goodness, Generals, that you guys did that. We very appreciate that, all of us who need our eraser stick fix, <laughs> very important. <laughs> All right, so let's use this to get into some more of these textures and you can see, oh, I just love this thing. It's just the greatest tool. And again, I'm not going for photorealism here. If you guys wanna do that, find another YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just not interested. I want something that is more of an interpretation than anything else. So I'm, I'm getting information, but I'm processing it myself, figuring out what I want to do with it. Because otherwise, in my opinion, you might as well just Xerox the photo. It's a lot better that way. Okay, so I'm using the eraser stick now to break up a lot of spots. So I'm gonna spend, I don't know, like another maybe five minutes on this piece. So here's, here's what you guys have to do for me. This is your job as the audience. I want you guys to go into the Google Drive link that's in the video description below. And I want you guys to figure out who you want me to draw next. We have a range of actors and actresses. I believe Benicio Del Toro is in there. Timothy, what's his name? I can't say his last name. He's gonna be in that Dune movie, that dude. I can't remember his name. Anyway, he's in there, Ava Mendez in there. Angela Bassett has sweet white dreadlocks that I think are incredible. So that's another option. So go into the Link and I want you guys to tell me who you want me to draw next. Okay, check it out. What I'm doing right now is just a couple little touches on the hair. This is where I am literally drawing individual hairs, but I don't leave them that way. I actually go in and I lift a little bit so I get more variation. Because if you come up here and you just draw individual hairs like this, like I'm doing up here, I mean, that's cool. That will definitely get you the texture but it's a little bit too similar. So this is what I'm gonna do next. Actually, I need more up here as well. Let's just add more texture like that. So now I don't leave this. I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna lift a couple spots just quickly with my eraser. And that just makes the hair look a lot less flat. I just think if you do some lifting, it's very helpful. And you know, let's do a little more down here. I feel like I lost some of these strokes. So have you guys decided? I gave you a job. See if you guys have decided who's up next, who are we drawing next? 
who should I tackle? I mean, we're going to get to all these hairstyles at some point. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to get to everybody today for good reasons, but um, eventually we will. We'll do multiple streams so you guys can see how to tackle all those different hair types because wow, there's a lot out there. I guess I feel like we should do a whole stream just on facial hair, right? <laughs> facial hair is like a whole other can of worms. So yeah, I don't know. It's funny. I mean, YouTube keeps telling me like, you hit this milestone of this many videos. And I'm like, awesome. I feel like I'm just barely <laughs> getting started. There's 8,000 more topics that we want to do for you guys. It's just going to take a while, I suppose. All right. Maybe a little bit more at the top. I'm just putting on these little like last wispy strokes. So we got something a little bit more substantial and maybe I'll finish the face later <laughs> because this is not a face stream. I would feel bad if we just did that the whole time, but I do want to make this better. I just don't really have time to do all of that right now. Ooh, what we do need, we need, need to make the sternal cloud mastoid better. Okay. Let's lift that up and maybe a little touch of some compressed charcoal down here. Yeah, again, the face would need like way more work. But at the very least, this gives you guys a sense of what to do. All right, so that's as far as I'm gonna take this. I totally could do more, but I wanna start another drawing so you guys can see. Okay, let's see what people want. Poppy Art says Angela Bassett. Victor would like Timothy, how do you say his last name? Ch Chalamet? I don't know. He was on SNL the other day. And so that, and somebody said in the Art Prof family Instagram that Timothy was their crush. And so that's why I thought, okay, well, let's, let's make that one person happy. I don't know who they are, but I can't remember. C. Cantrell, white hair angels. Angie says, Angela, Angela, Angela. Maria says, Angela, because I love her. W315 says Chalamet, I'm scared to do that white hair and charcoal. I know exactly. Trent says either of the guys. I suppose we should. That probably would be more fair, right? Maybe Angela Bassett needs her own stream because those dreads are awesome. I just love those so much. So nobody likes Benicio del Toro. Poor Benicio. Okay. Oh, thank you, Maria. Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet. Okay. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> it looks like it's Timothy or Angela. And hmm, that's tricky. Let, let's do Timothy because just because of the Dune thing. I mean, like, I love Angela Bassett. And yes, she was in Black Panther. And she was so awesome in that movie. But Timothy's on a whole PR thing. So let, let's just help. Timothy with his PR spiel. Okay, just give me a second. I just need to pull up Timothy. And there he is. He's okay. He's kind of cute. I mean, I don't know. Everybody to me, honestly, this is so terrible. But basically, okay, older folks, tell me if I'm crazy. Basically, to me, if you're under the age of 35, to me, you're 12. <laughs> I'm like, you're all the same age. I'm like, under the age of 35 is just one gigantic age. <laughs> and that's the category Timothy Chalamet is for me right now. <laughs> I'm like, you're under the age of 35. Okay, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, 10K. I feel bad for Benicio Del Toro, too. I bet he's a better actor than Timothy Chalamet. But I don't know. I haven't seen the Dune movie, so I have no idea. <laughs> Angie says Benicio is aging into Peter Gallagher's twin. Oh, I like Peter Gallagher. I was watching American Beauty the other night, actually, because that was such a good movie when it came out. And it was just on Amazon. I think it was free or something. But... I really like Peter Gallagher. He was in that terrible TV show. Did you guys ever see The O.C.? Oh, it was so bad. It was so bad, so trashy. <laughs> but that's, that's why we loved it, right? All right, Timothy Chalamet. Let's see how you are. Yeah, he's cute. He's fine. See, it's just, 
I feel like as somebody who's over the age of 40, it's sort of embarrassing to have a crush on somebody that's like half your age. <laughs> oh, there goes my muted razor. Hang on. All right, I'm back. All right, Timothy, let's see what you're made out of. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm just gonna take a minute. I'm gonna look at his hair. I wonder if he's got, he's definitely got product in there, right? I don't know. I, I, I'd be curious. <laughs> Who thinks he's got hair? I bet he's got, totally has hair product. How <laughs> could you not? <laughs> okay. Um, I kind of make sure I don't draw him too big because I need to have space to put all these things in here. I mean, I'll tell you guys, I would say 10 years ago, if you had told me I'd be drawing celebrities, I, I like would have died a thousand deaths, like seriously. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, okay, this is me thinking out loud a little bit, okay? Why is it that some people, academics, people in higher ed, da 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 da, why do they always think that if you have fun learning something, some silly song or I flash Benedict Cumberbatch to talk about his structure of his lips or something like that? Like, why is that less valid? Like, why does everything have to be taught in such a dry, boring way to be taken seriously? I'm like, you know what? If my students, if they remember something because I said something silly, great. Like, my whole attitude. To teaching now i'm like guys if me doing that gets you to learn i'll do it i totally will do it although i don't know maybe that's just what happens when you get desperate as a teacher you're just like i'll do it if you learn it i'll do it <laughs> but i mean i definitely know a lot of people who would absolutely crap on me for drawing a photo of a celebrity but the thing is it's like i don't know popular culture it, it works i mean i do it with I'm working with Project Open Door right now, which is a program for teens. And sometimes the way to get them to pay attention is to talk about something from popular culture and that you have common ground with. Sometimes it's just like, it doesn't matter to me. It's like, if it's a, if it's a TV show, great, that's fine. Plus like, who doesn't want to talk about Benedict? <laughs> Okay, God, he's got like a really strong mandible. Do you guys see this? Yeah, and his, hmm, I'm sort of liking you, Timothy. You've got really good jaw structure. Okay, forgetting about the hair, let's get the mass in. Back there. Yeah, because Lauren and Deep D had me when I first was at RISD. They had me, I think I was only been at RISD for like two years when I had Lauren. And she always says, she's like, Clara, you are such a different teacher. She's like, oh my God, I like would not even recognize you now the way that you teach. And I'm like, yeah, why, why was I so uptight? I don't know. I feel like maybe I, I felt like that's how I was supposed to teach because that's how everybody taught. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that I don't believe in discipline and having people work hard and learn all that stuff. It's just like, why is it wrong if we look at some hot white men in the process? Like, why is that not okay? And, and really, honestly, actually, do you guys know why I started adding all my men to my streams? It actually, it was from my RISD pre-college class. I think my TA told some of my students about my crush on Michael Fassbender, and they got wind of it. And they kept trying to distract me during class and it was very funny. And so I thought to myself, you know what? They're paying attention. I'm gonna give them an Instagram anatomy lesson. And it was so hilarious because like after that, I would get messages from the students going like, Clara, clavicle, starting clavicle. Like they learned all, they totally retained all that. And it wasn't even an anatomy class. It was because I just happened to be talking about that. And I was like, you know, that's really cool. I kind of like that. Okay, let's get an eye sockets. And maybe the nasal bone. I think that would help Timothy. See, this is the problem 
with vine charcoal. Do you guys see how I've been sort of wiping out the lower section of the face? It's because this is so fragile. So let me just very, very briefly block in the edges and the inside line of the lip. Yeah, I like your chin, Timothy. That's good. Who here has seen, I've never seen him in anything except literally the SNL show <laughs> that I saw the other day. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Actually, that's a little bit small. You know what I should do? I should move my drawing board up a little bit so you guys can see that better. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that lines up a lot better. All right, let me see what you guys are saying. Trent is saying you should listen to Seth Godin's TED Talk, Stop Stealing Dreams, Our Modern Education System, last hundred years, designed to train drones for industry. I will check that out, actually, because I've read a couple of Seth Godin's books. Some of his stuff I think is really smart. Some of it I think is really vague and hard to apply. That could just be me. But I'll check that out because I do think that he has really good things to say. Maria says, I think there's an academic prejudice on everything pop culture or mainstream with a bit of juvenoia. They think that nothing that is popular has value. I mean, there are a lot of things that are popular that I think are just really bad and awful, <laughs> but it's true. It's like, just because it's popular doesn't mean it's bad. I just don't think that anything is that straightforward. 10K says, Adrian, I agree. Timothy looks suspicious, like he's hiding a secret. Really? I don't know. I look at this picture and I think he's like, I'm young and cute and I know it. That's, but then again, I think that about everybody that's young and cute. So who knows? <laughs> and Prospero says, popular culture is great to get people interested, especially kids. Yeah, it's like, why, why does it have to be boring? Why? Hmm. Apparently, Adrian has the scoop on Timothy Chalamet. Timothy has a really weird expression on his face all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so some of you guys do remember the OC. Oh my god, that was the worst show. It was like worse than Beverly Hills 90210, and that's pretty bad, you guys. <laughs> and... Poppy Art says, my dad looked 12 in his wedding pictures. I know, isn't it a trip, you guys? I know, it's so bizarre to see that. Mackenzie says, I'm 18, so I feel like I'm supposed to be in love with him, but I can never keep up with new movies. I can't either. You know what, you guys? Okay, older people, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're all just here to confirm my craziness. I can't sit through a movie anymore. I just cannot. Usually within an hour, I'm either asleep or on my way to going to sleep. <laughs> it's a wonder the other. I just can't do it anymore. I don't know. Or if maybe this is specific to people that have kids or if it's just me. I have no idea. Anyway, I want to give a shout out to Boris. Thank you so much for your super chat. We greatly appreciate all the support you guys give us. We rely entirely on donations to keep Art Prof up and running because I think art education should be for everybody. I don't think you should have to pay $70,000 a year to get it. And that's why we have Art Prof, to make that possible for all of you guys here. Lucy Brown says, looks great so far. Amazing how you can draw things so fast. You know what? A lot of it is training and practice. If you guys are feeling like you want to make your pace faster, just do lots of figure drawings because it's like you just need somebody to light a fire under your butt. Like once that happens, you'll draw faster. And, and while I think people should draw at their own pace, that's totally up to them. I do think that there is a lot of value in drawing faster, especially if you have deadlines to meet or you're teaching. Sometimes you just don't have the option to do that. Like I watched this YouTube video a couple months ago of somebody doing this hyper-realistic colored pencil drawing and I think the video was an hour and a half and they were drawing grapes and they drew two grapes in that hour and a half. And I just thought, how are you able to get anything done? Like that would drive me insane. So yeah, it, it can be tricky. Okay. 
let's get back to Timothy and see how you're doing. You know, let's let's make this one a total hot mess, okay? Let's just fly around and see what could happen here. He's got a really wide face. Like, does everybody see how wide his forehead is? He's like, yeah, he's got a very unusual bone structure. Yeah, I didn't see little women. I don't know. I, I guess I sort of worried that I heard that little women was good. I don't know, but I just feel like I don't like those like chick flick movies. I don't know. Maybe that one was better. It got lots of good reviews, so I could be wrong. Although there was that movie Portrait of a Lady on Fire that got so many people were like, oh my God, it's so good. And so I was like all excited to watch it. And we actually did a movie crit on it. So you, if you guys look up under our playlists, we do have a movie art critiques playlist. And we did a critique of the paintings that are in that movie. And I just couldn't get over how bad the movie was. So it was hard for me. Oh, man, you look creepy in my drawing. Sorry, Timothy. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're very cute. But apparently you are not that cute in my drawing. So sorry about that. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about the Dune movie. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, I saw the the really old one with like Sting and Colin McLaughlin and everything, but I saw it so long ago. I honestly like cannot even remember what happens. So yeah. Okay, that's really creepy. You look like the Joker. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry, Timothy. <laughs> okay, let's just. Like I said, we're going to just make a hot mess. You guys ready? Let's make a hot mess. Because his hair, it, it's like really complicated. So the last photo we did of, is it India? I'm sorry. I actually can't remember the name. I really should remember the names of people I'm drawing. But anyway, um, in that drawing, their hair was very complicated. It's very curly, but it was pretty consistent. Timothy's hair, it's like it goes this way and it goes a little that. Like it's not very predictable what his hair is doing. So in some ways, this is a very different challenge because there's less predictability to the patterns in his hair. And that does, I think, make it a little harder. Although I think now I'm regretting not doing more work on the face because now this is getting to be... Well, I did say I was going to make a hot mess, so you guys can't say I didn't deliver. <laughs> but some of this is also, it's like eventually you do have to do some of this with compressed charcoal because, of course, the vine charcoal will stab you in the back later, and that's not fun, guys. But I do need to establish, like, the chunk of hair behind the neck. Yeah. Okay, so at the very least, that's a couple marks to just establish that. I don't know, his suit looks a little too big for him, but that could just be me projecting on him being like half my age. So <laughs> maybe that's part of it. I have no idea. This is really fun though, guys. Like I have not drawn the charcoal in so long. I mean, it feels good. It's, it's sort of like, memory lane or something. I mean, I feel like everybody at art school has a charcoal experience to speak of, <laughs> like those late nights. Actually, you know what's the worst is if you teach like a summer class and it's hot and sticky and you're covered in charcoal. That is a bad combination, guys. That I do not <laughs> recommend you doing. <laughs> you guys will also notice that I tend to twist a lot when I draw, like there's a lot of wrist action Actually, a lot of people have said that to me when I demo because they're not, it's not something you see that often. Like I think a lot of people, it's like they know the tip and that's pretty clear, but I really treat the whole thing as one big tool. So yeah. Okay, so let's look at this hairline. It's coming down. And like here, especially, it's a really soft transition. So I'll come back to that. But for now, let's get the hairs that are sloping down. And okay, I guess I have to do the face. Can't get away without it. Uh, let's just build up the eyes. He's cute, I guess. I don't know. I wonder if some of this is just like time and the place. 
It's like, I had to watch that X-Men movie at just the right time for Michael Fassbender to have his effect on me. Like, what if I'd watched X-Men when I was 20? Maybe I wouldn't have liked him at all. I have no idea. Oh, mysteries of the universe that we will never find out about. <laughs> He's got pretty dramatic eyebrows. And I am going to whip out the charcoal pencil in a minute, but I do want to see how much of the mouth I can do without doing that. Okay, that's super creepy. I'm sorry, Timothy. I'm really sorry. You do not look good in this. But I'm trying I'm trying to not use the pencil because I know I'm gonna get really tight the second that happens. Ooh, yikes. Ugh. You guys ever like not want to put in the pupils because you just know it's gonna look terrible? Like that's how I feel right now. I'm like, Ugh, can we please just skip this whole thing right now? Oh, that is chunky. That looks terrible. Sorry. That looks really bad. Oh my God. All right, let's just really fix this up. Maybe we just I'll go back in with some vine and just resketch that section because I know that's like, oh, it looks terrible. God, he's got a really square chin. I'm like really impressed, Timothy. Timothy Chalamet. Where is he from? Is he American? I have no idea. See, I need to know if he has an accent because that, that's a deal breaker for me. <laughs> I need to know. All right, let's add a couple strokes on this side. So my whole feeling about drawing hair is that you just have to have everything in place. So like a lot of this is not substantial enough. Like over here, I can tell definitely not enough hair, but it's like, it's there. Like the fact that it's there, it's like, it's holding a place for you. Okay, let's do some more squinting. Let's build this up like that. And actually, I think I need to pull down some of this hair at the top. I think the the overall contour of the hair isn't very good. So let me just look more at the mask. Because you know what? I think I was getting too sucked into some of those curls and stuff. He definitely has this like big mop of hair. Look at that. Yeah, we need more mass. There's definitely not enough mass here. Build some of that up. And definitely this will help too, just a little shadow down here at the bottom. And just so I don't feel horribly uncomfortable, we do have to work on the eyes because, oh God, they look terrible right now. I'm sorry. All right, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Anna Banana says, nah, the pupil is my favorite part. It's when it starts to look alive. Really? That's so funny because I'm always like, oh, do the pupil. I like the pupil when it's like almost done and I get to put that one dot of highlight. That's when I start to actually like the pupil. <laughs> Oh, so people think he looks very jokery. He does. I feel like he would be a good, like, prequel to Joker. It could be like Joker when he was in middle school or something. <laughs> Patrick says, it feels good to set up a drawing piece, drawing place, and draw big with your whole arm. I love that, too. And unfortunately, it's not that doable for the live streams. It's just really tricky with all the setup. I should take a picture of the setup so you guys can see because sometimes I feel like I'm surrounded by all of these pieces of equipment. Seven Angelic says hot mess approved. I want a big red stamp that says that. Well, we're gonna have to work on that for the Art Prof merch. Yes, Maya, I agree with that. That's a great idea. Monique says, lately I've been drawing in charcoal from old master portrait drawings. It seems easier than using photos of people. It's good practice. Oh yeah, for sure. I did so many master copies when I was in art school and it's a really nice way to analyze a painting because you have to look. I think that when you're drawing from a photo, it's a very different experience. I mean, when I draw from an old master drawing, it's more so I can pick apart the drawing, understand it from that point of view. 
I don't think it's great if you're trying to make your own drawing, but from a study point of view, it's really, really helpful. <laughs> AJ says, or at least Jared Leto's Joker is hot. See, you guys, to me, Jared Leto is like 15 and in that TV show, My So-Called Life with Claire Danes. That was a great show. And it was so sad when it got canceled. But to me, that's Jared Leto forever. Like I know he's been in other things, but I just think about him as being from My So-Called Life. <laughs> Morning Atlas says, how many different HBs do you use and what types? I don't know what it's called, but for example, 2B, 4B. Oh, okay. Well, for pencil, I don't tend to use anything that's harder than a 2B. And even a 2B for me is a little bit hard. I tend to err on 6B and up for pencil. Now for these charcoal pencils, I guess there's extra soft, soft, and there's medium. I'm using the soft one. I just hate hard charcoal pencils. It's my deal. But yeah, I'm totally into soft materials. I can't use the hard stuff. Like Song Kang, who has done tutorials for us at Art Prof, she's like, oh yeah, sometimes I'll go up to a 2H. I'm like, are you crazy? I'm like, I never use 2H. She uses like 4H and 5H in her pencils. So it really is personal preference entirely. All right, let's do some more. Remember, this is less about Timothy and more about his hair, but I do wanna do a little bit of work on the pupils so he doesn't look so much like a scary looking alien. I don't like these charcoal pencils. I think they're just not a good mix with the brand of compressed charcoal I'm using. I don't think it's the pencil's fault. I just think it's not blending well. So I wonder if that's actually an argument for when you buy supplies with charcoal to buy them from the same company, because I'm guessing that the makeup of the materials, they're just so different that they're clashing a little bit. I don't know. I, I feel like I should do a test of that someday, but anyway, not right now. Let's just give him a double eyelid. He needs something, right? The other option, you guys, if you want, we could also do a second stream where I like finish these. We don't have to, it's up to you guys, but we have done that on a couple streams where we will start on one stream and then finish on another. So if you guys want me to do that, let me know. At the end of the stream, just tell me what you're interested in because you know what I like about our prof? We're not accountable to anybody but ourselves because you know when we first started, I actually was like trying to make it into a TV show. Like we actually like pitched it in a couple places and nobody was interested, of course. <laughs> and um, I was like crushed because we had this one place that really was interested for a while, never worked out. So, oh my God, I, just, I remember that weekend. It was horrible. I was just like falling apart thinking about it. But now I am so glad that they turned us down because you know what I think would have happened? I think if they had picked us up we would have been on for like a couple episodes. I think it would have died because people are so conservative in terms of programming, at least the place that we were at. I'm not going to say where, but um, I was so upset because I was like, oh, I want right to have the validation of working with this place and also getting the resources and the funding and all that. And yeah, I mean, having no, funding. <laughs> that, that is definitely something that's an issue for us all the time, no matter what. But I think our prof would have died if we had gone that route because we've experimented so much. We've tried so many different things and some of it has been really bad and some of it has been great. And it's just hilarious to me that I think if we had stayed with them, I, I don't think we would have made it. I think that YouTube was the way to go. It's just people still really look down on YouTube, which I think is hilarious because I'm like, you all use it. You guys don't get to crap on something that you all use. Like that's basically a lot of the college professors are doing that right now. Like they all like talk down. And I'm like, you guys use it all the time for your classes. So don't even try to give me that crap. <laughs> all right, sorry, Timothy, you need some whites in your eyes so you're not so creepy looking. 
Oh, he's super creepy looking. I'm sorry. Oh, see, this is the problem with the portrait. Like, there's this whole, like, psychological baggage thing that makes it really hard to walk away from the face. And I'm totally doing it right now. I can't help it. All right, I swear. Let's just do a little bit of your mouth. Need a little mouth. We'll get back to that later on. I do need to do some more work. I think the eyes are too close. But anyway, let's do some more work on his hair. <laughs> All right, let's do some lifting, particularly up here. And this is really fun with the kneaded eraser. You can just push and pull. It's great. Lift. Because he's got some areas where the hair looks really sharp. Like down here, it almost looks wet. And that's where I think pulling out the background is going to help me. So like over here, you know, like there's this one hair that's really jumping out. So yeah, I do think you guys, one of the keys to drawing hair, it's like working that contour, looking at that silhouette, giving it a background, giving it a context, all those things matter. Tell me you guys in the chat, how many of you have struggled with hair in the past? Do you still struggle with it? What is it that you have trouble with? Is it a certain type of hair or is it just hair in general? I'm always curious to hear. That's the best part about all these streams. Cause I actually, I mean, I guess when we first started live streaming wasn't what it was, that was like six years ago. But um, definitely that's been a huge game changer. I, I just never occurred to me that we would be live streaming. So it's really fun. Oh, Timothy, your eyes are driving me crazy. Can't leave them alone. Oh, so bad. This is the problem with portraits. It's like there's so much crap. All right. I'm pulling out where I see highlights. So back there, and there's a big mess of highlights here that probably should be done with the eraser stick. see actually this I sort of lost the neck so let's bring that back and make this a little less boring because I feel like it got boring really fast just want to loosen up I feel like I was getting a little tight a couple of minutes ago so I'm just putting down some quick marks so I don't fall into that trap and yeah, there's a lot of negative, see, like all this negative space, the stuff that's like in between the hairs, that stuff's pretty important. Don't forget about it. And he's got like a big cluster down here, which is very round. So I'm going to model that a little bit better. So really what you're trying to do with hair, you're looking at clumps, clumps of hair, clump one here, clump here, clump here. And you're looking at the direction, like he's got this big curl up here. And then this one goes down. So trying to like subdivide the big shapes like this. Actually, you know who has really nice hair? Sherlock. <laughs> I love his hair in that show. But I had to take a Sherlock break. I was watching it too much. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to like, it's like Jordan and Spider-Verse. Like he's like, I can't watch it too much. I'm like, yeah, I know how you feel. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Like, I had to take an X-Men break. I was like, Clara, you can't watch this all the time. It's not going to be as good. So you have to, like, put yourself on, like, a movie diet. You're like, okay, let's not watch this movie for at least a few days. <laughs> so we can, it can taste that much better <laughs> later on. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of got cool hair. All right. Let me see what you guys are chatting about. Oh, sorry, I need that. Um, Shu says, I draw each and every details, making it a tedious process. You don't have to draw them all. Pick and choose. Be more selective because you don't need everything in there. There's a lot that you can lose. You would be very surprised that it's actually okay to get away without those things. Kimberly says, I have no patience for tiny strands. 
and detailed hair, I can do okay on the face, but the hair is another story. The strands are so distracting. I mean, everybody's like that. Everybody looks at it and goes, ooh, look at that one, but you can't. I mean, it's like seeing past details is hard for everybody, really, really difficult. Shayim says, I'm basically stumbling around, mostly because I'm still in high school and trying to figure out, quote, art. Keep stumbling. That's part of the process. Anybody who tells you they are not stumbling as an artist, they are a total liar. Or they're in denial. <laughs> Whichever one you guys want to choose. So that's stumbling around shame. In my opinion, that's exactly what you guys need. And Patrick says, wild hair is usually the easiest to draw for me. Pretty braids can be difficult. Well, I think it's hard because once you say put hair in a braid, it becomes a tension issue. So like if you guys look at Timothy, his hair doesn't have any tension because it's not put up or anything like that. But the second you add tension, it's like then you really have to create this push and pull with the hair. Like his hair is all floppy. So it's like there's not a lot to do there, but it's hard. Vincent says, I have trouble shading and adding depth to the hair. You know what, Vincent? That might actually partially be a lighting issue because even the photo I have right now of Timothy, it's not that great in terms of lighting. I mean, you can see some stuff, but if it were me and I was doing a portrait, this is not the photo I would pick. It's just, it's hard to get these. And honestly, I don't have artist models right now because of COVID. Others I totally do my own. Takeo says, I struggle because it always looks stiff. Yeah, that's sort of the opposite problem where somebody said earlier, oh, I can't draw braids. And it's like for some people showing the flow and the movement is really, really difficult as well. Tom Cuke says, in my educational technology class, we had to make a YouTube video introducing an assignment. Starting to be more valued in education, at least a little, it can be a great educational resource. Oh, that's nice to hear. I mean, I wonder it could be isolated to a whole art school hangup thing because they have a lot of hangups in art school. But I suspect when the younger people, in fact, my, not my generation, basically, <laughs> when you guys are in charge, then it's going to be different. It's just people my age and above are in charge right now. And we did not grow up with YouTube. And so it doesn't feel normal. It's sort of like this weird thing. I mean, I love YouTube. I think YouTube is amazing. But most people my age in academia do not feel that way. So it's, it's a really, really different mindset. My art journey says I get charcoal everywhere when I'm drawing. When class was a thing, I'd always walk out with charcoal all over my face and no one would tell me. <laughs> I've been there. And you know something? When I was at RISD, it wasn't that bad because it's art school. Everybody knows you went to drawing class. You know what was the problem is when I taught at a liberal arts college and people were in all different kinds of classes. You walk around, people are like, what? is wrong with you? <laughs> like, did you just go clean the chimney or something? Yes. That was a lot more embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, I probably do have charcoal on my neck. I actually don't look that bad right now. Sometimes it's like you walk out, there's like a big thing on your face. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> okay, let's see what else people are saying. McKinsey is saying, are you going to do a tutorial on painting here? Yep, we will get there. Oh, you guys, if I could just clone myself, I could do all these things. Like, it just makes me crazy. I'm like, yes, I want to. I want to. Yes, 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 yes. It's just, there's only one of me and I don't have an army of people, drones, to do all the work for me. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Shaim, if you like Zendaya, because apparently I just learned how to pronounce her name correctly. I was calling her Zendaya forever. Anyway, we did some drawings of Zendaya the other day in our colored pencil tutorial on how to draw clothing. Pineapple Ring is saying, what is your favorite medium to work in? I really honestly do not have one because I am a total jack of all trades. I Some days it's sculpture, other days it's lithographic crayon. I mean, I have stuff I like to do, but everything's so different. I really honestly cannot pick one. In fact, I generally always pick the subject and then I pick the media to fit the subject. 
I know other people who are like, okay, charcoal, that's my thing. That's all I do. Everything I do is going to be in charcoal. And I'm not like that because I just like to jump around a lot. Vincent says, I find it hard to draw a person with bright lighting and minimal shadows. I always go for portraits with lots of dark shadows. You might try it the other way around, Vincent. You might just find that maybe switching things up could be what you need to figure out another way to do it. Because I do think as much as practice is really important and trying lots of different things is important, it's also good to shake things up and do the opposite of what you would normally do. Like Lauren has this assignment where you collect all these white objects and you make a quote white painting, but then she has another project which is almost the opposite. She calls it a night painting where you paint a scene at night and it's all about the blacks. So sometimes balancing those extremes is a really good way to go. All right, let's do a little bit more on Timothy. I don't know that he's gonna get that far. Sorry, Timothy. So maybe you guys can discuss in the chat if you would like me to finish Timothy <laughs> at some point, or maybe we should do Angela next time. I have no idea. You guys let me know. That's what I'm all about because I think that's really cool that you guys can communicate with me so directly. It's really nice. Like just ask you what you think and what you need. I, I generally honestly do not know. Like I just had a meeting with our phenomenal mods who run our discord. And I was explaining to them like, listen, you guys give me so much insight. I, I just can't do that by myself. And so all that feedback, you guys tell me we need this, we need that. Oh my God, I need that so bad. So just keep it coming guys, okay? In the discord, in the live chat, tell me what you need. I honestly do not know. Like I'm just so far removed from everything. Look at this one hair, Timothy. Look at that. That's just so cute. It's a little out of control, but that's fine. I do really like this beautiful bunch of curls. I feel like that would be really fun to sculpt. Timothy, I think you would be fun to sculpt. Yeah, you have lots of nice curls. Actually, when I was in, you know, and I really understood hair, this is my hair moment as an artist. When I was in graduate school, I did my graduate degree in sculpture, okay? Not because I want to be a sculptor. I mean, I'm not really a sculptor. I sculpt, but I'm not a sculptor like some of my friends are. And we had these two models who were from Brazil and they were like dancers. They had incredible, like you would see every muscle on them. And one of them, I remember his name was Francisco. He had beautiful, like, small little curly hair and we did a sculpture of him and oh man I loved sculpting his hair it was like I don't know how to describe it it was like sculpting jewels it was so beautiful and I feel like that was my moment where I was like yes I love sculpting hair this is the greatest thing so sometimes it's like you just have to get find a subject that gets you excited because I still, I should show you guys that sculpture. I'm sure I have a picture of it somewhere. It's probably in my drive or something, but I'll show it to you because it really taught me so much about hair and what I needed to look at. And it, it just, it was one of those moments where it just, everything made so much sense. It was so cool. All right. Oh, I just made a big mess of that. All right, Timothy, you need some of these. Ha ha ha. That's really fun. I'm a fan of your hair, Timothy. I don't know if you're a good actor, but. <laughs> Did anybody see him on SNL the other day? I don't know. My daughter watches SNL, but I, I think it's just because I tell her to watch it. So I don't know that a lot of the younger generation watches. I feel like that's a very dated show. I don't know. Maybe, maybe people still watch it. It's hard to say. I don't trust myself when it comes to anything. Okay. We need some eraser stick action, guys, like here. Like there's a highlight here. And I do think you guys, if you're struggling with hair, it does help to loosen your strokes because I, I do think that unless you're doing somebody that has hair that's like massively sculpted, like really stiff and hard, there usually is a, a flimsiness 
to the way that hair is done. So tell me in the chat, do you guys want me to finish Timothy or for the next drawing stream, do you want me to draw Angela or Ava or ben poor Benicio? Didn't get any love. You guys do not like Benicio. He's a cool looking guy. Like not in like a you're hot and handsome, but like he's really interesting to look at. Sort of like Steve Buscemi. He's like really, really unique. Or Willem Dafoe. He's really cool looking. I like actors like that. They're just, they're not like conventionally good looking. I don't know. For me, it's a little bit too generic when everybody just starts to look the same. Okay, let's do a little bit more down here because I do want to show how it's darker at the bottom and then further up it gets, uh, what's going on there? I have to do some squinting. I'm trying to divide up this section down here. I don't know. I'm trying to not subdivide too much because th there is such a thing as like, if you separate things too much, then the hair looks like it, it doesn't belong. It's hard. It's like you want things to be separate, but together. That's, I mean, that's the whole issue with anatomy. Everything always has to be separate, but together. But it's like, how do you do that without like losing all the information? Yeah, Timothy, I'm sorry. You need way more work than this. This is not, this is not nice. I'm sorry. Let's just give him a, a little bit of highlight. He needs some highlight for his sad highlight-less face. <laughs> and he does have really nice mandibles and psychomac arch. So I am appreciative of that. Timothy. Um, I just want to give him lips that don't look horrible. I don't know. I think he looks really Joker-like. And maybe let's fix up a little of this. Actually, I think I made him a little too... Ugh, crap. That happened. I think he's a lot rounder than I made him. I mean, I would sit here and fix it, but I'm not gonna get too deep into that. All right, so tell me in the chat who wants me to finish Timothy or do we move on to Angela and Benicio and Ava? <laughs> Let's see. Art Journey wants me to finish. So does Shaim. And Amshu says, of course, yes. Oh, well, we've got some Angela people who are dying to see those white dreadlocks. Oh, we have one vote for Benicio. Oh, we have a few. Okay, actually. <laughs> All right, we'll see what I decide. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put Timothy away <laughs> for a little while. We'll pull him back out and then we'll see. If anything, I hope I've given you guys a place to start because I do think that for a lot of people, the thing about hair, I, I don't think the finishing part is that difficult. I think it's really the setup and how do you make that transition from nothing to later. <laughs> All right, you guys, please join me in the Art Prof Discord. I will be in the Art Alongs channel. The Discord invite link is in the video description below please subscribe to our YouTube channel and join the Art Prof family. And I want to say thank you to our top Patreon supporters for giving us the resources we need to keep Art Prof up and running. So that way, all of you guys can have access to a free art education. Thank you guys so much for watching and drawing Timothy and also all the other... <laughs> celebrities who we tried to immortalize, but you know, we just ended up apologizing to them. We'll see you guys.